All right, here we are for another fun bonus episode. This one is about uh, chapter 19, or sorry, episode 19, which was Genesis chapters 22 through 24. Yeah, so what kind of tasty treats yes. trivia you got for us this time? Well, all right, so the first thing I want to talk about was the whole Isaac kerfuffle. Um, which which kerfuffle? The sacrifice The kerfuffle? sacrificing his son thing. So That was so weird. Yeah, so, so what's interesting about this is that According to this uh, particular study Bible I'm looking at right now, one of the things it brings up is that in the Bible, human sacrifice is regarded as one of the worst offenses against God and humankind. What? Interesting. Yeah. And I, unfortunately, it doesn't really like back that up by giving me a citation. It just mentions the verse where God says to to sacrifice um, Isaac. Isaac. Which I guess is when the angel comes and is like, do not lay a hand on the boy. I see that's the... the um, so maybe this is where it originates, this thing of human sacrifice being Like this is the precedent not allowed. of no I'm not more sure, human sacrifice. Yeah. Huh. Um, but so according to this, human sacrifice is one of the reasons that the Canaanites were condemned. Um, and they're saying that archaeologists... Oh, have, because they... Yeah, archaeologists have dug sacrificed up... Sacrificed humans? Have dug up urns with ashes and the bones of children... Um, and from the sacred precincts of Carthage, which was Carthage doesn't get founded until like 900 BC. And right now we're around like 2000 ish BC. Mm. So that's way in the future. But that was, I think it's supposed to be the Canaanites who also founded Carthage. Mm. Um, anyway, yeah, apparently the Carthaginians sacrificed children as part of their religion. So like this was a thing that probably happened in the area. But yeah, it's sort of unclear. I was just, I thought that was interesting. The fact that it mentions it, but then doesn't really like this Bible, at least didn't follow it up with an explanation of like, why? I or... I, I would like to learn more about human sacrifice. That sounds really <laughs> weird. Okay. I'm sorry. Let me, let me oh, back would that up. would you? I let have me... a new idea for a hobby. I'd no. like to learn. <laughs> <laughs> let me back that up. Uh, I just, I'm just, what I mean by that is like, there's been a lot of cultures through history that have partaken in some kind of right. human sacrifice, whether it was sacrificing children or sacrificing members of the community or only sacrificing, you know, captured slaves of our enemies um, mm-hmm. to the gods or to whoever or sacrificing virgins or whatever. And I'm just so curious about what the psychology has to be in order for a community to be like, yes, this is a thing we're going to do. Um, that's all. I don't mean more to pick up as a hobby, more just I'm sure there's been a lot of research about commonality, commonalities among cultures that practice human sacrifice or different traditions. And I'm just curious about it. It's very morbid, but it's also fascinating at the same time. Yeah. Just like, how did this come about? Like, why? I suppose. I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. I, why I in have... the world would people decide to do this? Yeah. Yeah, it is. I really don't have any good information about it. I just wanted to more bring it up as a thing to think about that okay. that is that that does seem kind of weirdly out of keeping with kind of the rest of what the message mm-hmm. is in this. Right. Um just I find it so interesting that God wants Abraham to do this. It's another like test. Like God is one of those boyfriends who tries to <laughs> test you. <laughs> and then you have to like pass the test or not. And if you don't, then, you know, bad things happen to you. And if you do, then maybe bad things will also happen to you. It's all so weird. Mm, it's yeah. like, yeah, one of those bullshit relationship tests where the person doesn't let you know they're testing you in some way. Exactly. Mm, that does. Yeah, sound that's like not a good practice. Yeah. Not a good practice. Okay, so I have another sort of more conspiracy theory. Oh, more conspiracy this. theories. Yeah. Right. So I know this is normally your jam, Dedeker, <laughs> but so we've already established that Abraham and his wife, Sarah, Isaac's mother, were con artists. Mm-hmm. I notice it's convenient in this story that the servants are left behind and no one else witnesses this. Mm-hmm. Oh, what if what if Isaac and Abraham are actually in on this together? And like, what? they're because they're the ones who came back and are like, this is what happened. God tested us. This is God's message. Like all this stuff. What if it's another con? Just like everything Wait, are else, they conning like, God? No, conning say, all the people into but, being like, we're like truly God's chosen people. He's tested us. Like and, they just made up the story that this happened. Just throwing it out there. That's a possible conspiracy theory. Because mm. there's no witnesses. So Abraham also wrote this chapter? <laughs> Well, I mean, I mean, supposedly Abraham didn't write any of these chapters, but 
but this was written by the stories people told, right? He's just trying to bolster, like, how good of a guy Abraham is for being willing to sacrifice his son in the first place, and, like, maybe even how good of a son Isaac is for, like, submitting to being sacrificed. Okay, what about this? What if part of it's, like, people accusing him of why you, you know, killing all these other tribes and taking their land, like we talked about before with the whole Manifest Mm -hmm. Destiny thing, being like, what the heck? And he's like, no, like, l- really, I'm only doing what God tells me. It's not because I have anything against you guys. I just have to kill you because God told me to. Look, I even d- almost did this with my son. And, and they're Isaac's like, if like, God yeah, told totally. you to kill your own son, would you do that too? <laughs> right. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, actually, that did happen. And mm. then they ha- they come up with this whole story. Okay. I just wanted to remind you both from our conversation with J.D. Mc- McElkey. This is what he was referring to when he was saying that, like, yeah, Isaac's actually 37. So it actually kind of looks like a fun daddy scene. If you know what I mean. Like how? <laughs> Emily's how face. You, how Emily's you, face. How do you get to that, though? Don't ask me. That was him. Remember, no, I was I always I just, scandalized I was, by it. Well, well, I was looking for that. And grabbing I didn't see him it. and tying him up oh. and pretending to sacrifice. Like, it's kinky. I see. And please, yeah, please, whoever's listening right now, do not think that this is my idea. Do not think that I am projecting this onto <laughs> this. This is what JD told us. I was scandalized. I did not want to think of this. Mm-hmm. That's just what he pointed out. But you can't stop. Okay, that's why you were so scandalized. Yes. I remember this now yes. and your little Christian mind. Yes. And I was like, what's what's the problem here? I don't know what they're talking about, but yes. now I do. Mm-hmm. It's because this was always, okay. the story was always painted for me as, you know, Isaac's like 13. Right, um, right. Like He's just a little, little innocent boy, not a full grown ass man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> being wrestled onto an altar by an older man just yeah. saying i think he liked it oh gosh well and that's that's the other thing too actually when we were talking about was there a struggle or not mm-hmm. considering at this time abraham's over 100 years old and isaac's 37 right so i think isaac had to let him do this or there's yeah. no way that old abraham could have wrestled him and tied him what up. if abraham's like what if okay what if he was like, Isaac, go keep gathering some stuff to build this altar. Abraham uh-huh. snuck up behind him, knocked him out, and okay, was like, maybe. this is the best way to do this, is I just gotta like knock him out so he doesn't know what's happening. Okay. And then tied him to the Perhaps. altar. I suppose it's possible, yeah. Maybe, I don't yeah. know. It's, or, I don't, yeah, okay. It's it's a very mythological sounding story, you know? It, it is, It's yeah. a very hero, yes. like heroic sounding story. I suppose, yeah. What else you got for us? Um, okay, this one's actually interesting. So this, I don't know if you guys remember this. So it's a few episodes ago where um, Abram, back back when he was Abram, was stressing about the fact that he didn't have an heir and that his land was going to go to his servant. Mm-hmm. Like his servant was going to be his heir. Oh. Right. And he was upset about that. And yeah. then God was like, chill, I got you. Um, so I have a little bit of more insight about that. What's interesting is if I'm understanding this correctly, El- Eliezer, 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 I'm not sure how you say it, um, that that servant was also this servant who was sent to go get the bride for Isaac. The really verbose one. What? Yeah, that his like his most honored servant, right? His like top dude who was in charge of all his stuff. Mm. He's the one who he sends to go do this very important job. So what I learned about Did he this, get some stuff in return? Well, yeah. So here's here's what I, I learned about this is that um tablets discovered in other ancient cities reveal that childless couples regularly selected a servant as a replacement son. And there were like contracts drawn up about the fact that you would be the heir to this, that you would receive all these things, with the stipulation that if a natural son is born, your second place after him. Mm. but you're still like an honored member of the household and you still inherit some stuff. Like you're still, you know, Dang. get some, some privileges from that or whatever. Still get some canapes. Yeah. A few canapes. Yeah. <laughs> We're not going to live that one down. I also <laughs> thought that you just said neglected. You so did say neglected, just so you know. Neglected. Yes. Hmm. Well, there you yes. go. It's a, it's a new one. Um. So yep. also part of that servant's duty was to, um, take care of the like adopted parents, the ones who are giving him this inheritance. Okay, it's so like servant. his masters. His masters, okay, at, like as a son would yes. to like do their burial and like do mm. those sorts of rites. If there for was them. no natural born son, correct? Okay. Yeah. So anyway, there, there have been contracts found about all of this, um, and so I guess just kind of specifying that this 
relationship of having this very honored person who would have as important a job as going to find a bride for your son was actually a, a not uncommon relationship for the time. I thought this was kind of interesting. Um, and so he did maintain this important status in the household because it says he controlled all that Abram possessed. Um, so that was, yeah, he's the oldest and most trusted of Abram's servants. Hmm. So do you think that then what? when Isaac was born, he was like, dang it. Dang it. I, I, I mean, how could he not be a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah, probably. But I guess he was a very loyal he still servant. is doing right by Abraham. That's yeah. true. He's still trying to, to be good and get him a good wife. He's a good boy. Yeah, he's still trying to be a good boy. And I suppose if he does believe that, you know, Abraham is chosen by God, then, you know, he would still be loyal to that. Yeah, and that's true. support it all. That's true. Um, the last thing I have is I was trying to figure out how old Rebecca is mm-hmm. and I can't find it out. Mm-hmm. Um, what I know is that, so Isaac was 37 years old during the binding of Isaac, which Video is, game? I know, right? What? I, the binding of Isaac is the term for that story when he's tied up on the altar. So th- that video game is named after. It's also a video game. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. named yeah. after that. Um, so by, but he's very young in the binding of Isaac. Yeah, he's a little kid in that, yeah. Um, and it's unrelated to the story in pretty much every other way. <laughs> so, But anyway, yeah, by but doing the math on... So Sarah had Isaac when she was 90, and then she died Jeez. after the binding of Isaac when she was 127, which makes Isaac around 37 at the time that that happened. Okay. And then Isaac's 40 years old when he marries Rebecca. Okay. So that's interesting too, but I don't get anything about Rebecca's age, unfortunately, and it doesn't seem like... There's any so it could have been clues anywhere from twelve to yeah all, all the way on up yeah so according to this okay. person um, Rashi uh, and and these other interpretations um, and the midrash and the Talmud who also give more details about this so when she sees Isaac at the end like when she's coming back with with the servant um, that she specifically is like that she sees him praying and asks like, who is this spiritually exalted man? Cause she's mm. really into that. So just kind of a little more detail about. I did like, say that he oh. went out to the fields to meditate. Right. So like, she saw that and was that's... like, Oh yeah. Oh, she's a woman after my own heart. I totally would have done the same thing. <laughs> who is that guy? Like meditating and being so mindful. Yeah. And so then, <laughs> and then she modestly covers herself with the veil. Yes. Um, in, in all this story. Um, the other interesting thing that I think we'll kind of see more later, because she moves into Sarah's old tent. Mm-hmm. Apparently, there were three miracles that characterized Sarah's tent that stopped happening once Sarah died, oh. but then started happening what? again once what? Rebecca okay, moved Okay, hang in. on, hang on. Before you tell us what... what? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Emily, what possibly could these tent miracles be? The tent was more spacious <laughs> than it appeared from the outside. Like a Harry like Potter the, tent, yes. Like the TARDIS, yeah. Yes, okay. okay. The tent was illuminated by, I don't know, some like floating embers cool. oh, of yeah. light. Yeah, very magical. And okay, what's the third one? The tent was uh, shrouded from enemies when thing shit was getting real. Like it's, it's like, like it's not flammable. Like they try to set it on fire, and it's. I thought flame you meant retardant. like it's invisible, or like oh, like a cloaking device. No, I meant like it's invisible. It's yeah, shrouded yeah. from okay. enemies. When like enemies try to come towards it, and they're like, "Where is that tent?" And then it, <laughs> they couldn't find it. They just can't okay. find it. It's gone. Okay, that's good. All right, like what, are, what are your predictions? Then, three that occur. Oh, those, those are Emily's three. Tent what are miracles. your three? Okay, uh, definitely like instant pop up tent. Like <laughs> okay. way back in that day. Okay. Uh, but also at the same time, easy to collapse as well. Mm, so not like the problem nice. with modern day pop up tents. Um, okay. That soundproof. Oh, that's uh-huh. a good one. Okay. Yeah. That is a okay. miracle. Yeah, that's quite a miracle. Yep. Third tent miracle. Third tent miracle. I feel like your miracles aren't very biblical so far. They're a little more I, awesome practical I'm trying miracles. To, yeah, I'm trying to think of like, if I had a miraculous tent, what would I want it to do? Because Emily's not far off with one of hers. What? Really? Yeah. Okay, well then for, forget the <gasps> cool. rest of my tent ideas. I want to hear what it actually is. No, come on. You have one more. Give us one more. Okay. Um, Wh- okay. No, I'll do one better. Which of Emily's three do you think is the closest? Okay. To Emily reality? said more spacious on the inside, illuminated and invisible from enemies. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Most biblical. I think the last one. Yeah, I think the last one too. Interesting. Invisible from enemies. 
Okay, here's what it is. The first one is that a lamp burned in her tent from Shabbat Eve to Shabbat Eve. Oh, so, yep. Dang. Um, which That's is starting this then. Jewish precedent of a lamp of burning, lamps burning for a long time. Long, right? Okay. Um, yes. So that was the, the light. You were close-ish okay. with that one. The second is that there was a blessing in her dough. What? Uh, <laughs> Excuse me? Like, the bread she made was... Blessed was so good. It was it was a it was a blessing. But I don't have the details about what that blessing was. A blessing was. in her dough. There was a blessing in her dough. Oh, uh, okay. And then the last one is that a cloud hovered over her tent, symbolizing the divine presence. Oh, I see. That's also a precedent that comes yeah. back later. Yeah, yeah, I would have never have gotten those two. But Emily, you were not far off with yeah, the light definitely. thing. It wasn't floating embers around, but still, Just, the, like, yeah, the fact the that a light that was would involved. Last. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Anyway, yeah. on this, uh, maybe we'll bring that game back again another time. <laughs> trying to guess, guessing the miracles. Yeah, yeah. Guess the miracles. Wow, that's so interesting. All right, well, that's all the bonus content I got for you today. Until next yeah. time.